Welcome to Electron Online and here we're going to see an interesting video about how a DC current motor works, a direct current motor. It all comes down to the basic principle of having a current loop rotate inside a magnetic field. So here we have the magnetic, the magnetic north, the magnetic south, think of those as the two ends of two magnets right there. And we have a current loop, a loop that carries current around in this direction, and it's rotating in this direction. The reason why it's rotating like this is because at this very moment, as the current on the left side goes in this direction, the current on the other side goes in this direction, with a magnetic field across it like this, it will cause a torque to exist on that loop, assuming that the loop can turn about the center points right here, indicated by that dashed line. So imagine, take your right hand, Put, in, put your fingers in the direction of the current, then curl your fingers in the direction of the B field. You can see that the force is downward right here, so we have a force downward on the left side of the loop. Again, using your right hand rule, take your fingers in the direction of the current, curl your fingers in the direction of the B field, and your thumb will point in the direction of the force. So there's a force on the right side of the loop upward. You can see that force causes a, a torque. Torque equals to I, the current, times the strength of the B field, times the cross-sectional area, which will cause the loop to turn around like that. So the loop will have an angular velocity going in this direction with a torque causing it to turn in this direction. Now, what happens when the loop makes a quarter turn? So now you can see that the right side is on top, the left side is on the bottom, the current is still moving in this direction, the current is still moving in this direction, but now in this case, these two sides of the wire will be directly above each other, one above the other. Notice again, using the right hand rule, take your fingers in the direction of the current, Curl your fingers in the direction of B field, your thumb will point in the direction of the force. Same at the bottom, current, B field, force is down. But now the force is pulling in opposite direction, no longer any torque. The torque at this moment is zero. The only reason why the loop is still turning in that direction because it has some angular momentum, it's going to continue turning in that direction. But as the loop continues to turn, now the top is on the left, the bottom is on the right. Notice the current is now in this direction, using the right hand rule. Point your fingers in the direction of the current. T turn your fingers in the direction of the B field. Now the force is upward here, here. Current this way, B field, force is downward. Notice now that the torque is a negative IBA. The torque is now in the opposite direction, causing a force to try to turn the, the, uh, the uh, loop this way. And so what happens is that the loop will slow down, come to a stop, and then the torque will start turning in the opposite direction. So if you have a situation like this, what the loop would do is simply just go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth as the torque switches direction. The angle momentum carries it through a little bit further, but the torque will stop it, push it the other direction, and it'll go back and forth and back and forth, which of course does not make a good motor. So the solution to that was a very interesting concept right here. So the ends of the current loop were attached to these semicircular pieces of metal. They're still conductors, and those had a small gap at the top and the bottom. Also, to complete the circuit at the bottom, we have what we call brushes. These are very soft metal pieces that are pushed together. Sometimes they're actually like a metal brush made out of copper, very tightly wound together, and with springs they are pushed against that loop right there. So as the loop turns, there's contact made continuously because of the softness of the metal and the, the spring pushes against it with continuous contact. It allows it to spin without too much friction and so the loop can actually spin around and continue to make contact. Notice when the gaps reach the brushes right here, then the brush which is in contact with the left side of the loop here as the left side of the loop now gets to the bottom and then it continues turning, the top side of the loop will now start making contact with the left brush right here, which means that the current direction will flip back and forth in the direction of the loop inside here that's turning around in the magnetic field. Now let's see what happens here. We have the same switch situation as we have here, current going in the same direction, the forces are still there, the torque is exactly the same as it is here, and the, the torque will cause the loop to spin around like this. But now when we get to the halfway point, notice that the, the right side of the loop is now at the top. So we can see that the torque continues to be there, but gets less and less and less as you get to the point where the two are right on top of each other. When you get to the point where they're right on top of each other, of course, the torque goes to zero. So this force is still there, but the effect of it, is form, as far as the torque is concerned, goes to zero. The angular momentum will continue pushing this loop around, continue to turn like this, but at the moment, at the moment that this wire brush crosses the gap 
and then makes contact with the other side right there. So instead of having the current coming down this way, there all of a sudden will be a momentary switch with current going in the opposite direction. So the current goes from there, from this direction, before we get to the gap, to this direction after we get to the gap, and all of a sudden the current switches direction. So this now becomes the predominant current as the loop keeps on turning. And what happens then, as the loop continues to turn, we're now in this situation. Right hand rule, current goes in this direction. Magnetic field in this direction, thumb points downward, so the force is now downward. Here, current now is this direction, magnetic field in this direction, so now we have the force going upward, and so that means that the torque will continue in, a, in the same direction as it is over here, and will continue to turn the loop around and around and around. Every time it does a half a turn, again, the brushes get to the gap, which causes the current to switch in the loop, and will keep that same torque direction going, and keeps the loop turning around and around and around. So this current will cause this to turn, and this in effect then is what we call the DC motor. It will keep spinning the motor around and around and around in the same direction, opposed to this situation where we just go back and forth and back and forth. Here, we have this continuous turn in the same direction, and the torque always being in the same direction will cause the loop to turn, to turn, and to turn, and that's what we call a DC motor. To make it more effective, DC motors, of course, typically don't have a single loop of wire here, but they have multiple loops, 500 or 1,000 loops, to really amplify that effect, because it turns out the torque is equal to IBA times the number of loops. And so if you want a stronger torque, meaning more of a driving force to turn that motor around, you simply just need more, more wires or more loops. And of course, if you make the motor bigger with a bigger cross-sectional area, that helps as well. And so this is what we then term as a DC motor. And the simple little device where we have the current switching back and forth every half a turn is what makes a DC motor possible. And that's how they work.